Welcome back to another episode of Purebred Dogs JA. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Robert, and we have two special guests here. We have Damani, who is a dog breeder, and Wooly and his team from Wooly K9. Now, gentle people, welcome. Yeah, thank thanks thank for you. having us. All right, it's been a long time, over a year. You know, this episode is in the making. Yes. You know? But finally. Right? But finally, finally. <laughs> All right, so in this episode, we'll be discussing absolutely everything you need to know about this massive Caucasian Shepherd. All right, so, but in order to know where we're going, we have to know where we're coming from. So let's start with the history of the breed. So Damani, just tell us a little about the history of this massive dog. Well, these dogs originally, they're from the uh, Caucasus mountain region. That's the border of Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. And their original um, goal was to defend the livestock from predators like bears, wolves, mm -hmm. and you know, what um, owners normally would do is they would crop the ears. So yeah. in case if they were to get in a fight with a wolf, mm -hmm. it wouldn't grab on to the ear yeah. because that's the vulnerable spot, Yeah. right? And also with this breed, there are two types of Caucasian Shepherds. Mm, okay. You have the mountain type, which is even more massive yeah. than this one. And bigger bones, thicker fur. Right. Yeah. And then you have the step type, which is not as much, still big, but a uh -huh. little bit smaller uh -huh. and not, not as big and not the, the coat is also not That's as perfect. like like this one here so this one would be more like the step type okay right um and then now in the also you can find these dogs in the central asian region mm -hmm. so like you'd have them from like in azerbaijan yeah um uh, a bit. Turkey, not, not, I'm sorry, not Turkey, uh, Turkmenistan. Yeah. Some of them, I believe, they come from Turkmenistan as well. And some of them are now even migrating to Romania. That, yeah, that's true. And that's where I got my male grizzly. Our yes. male grizzly, oh. we got that. So, yes, yeah, so, and then now in the uh, 1900s, what happened was the Russians, they popular, popularized this breed. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually bred them for prison work yeah. prison work in the russian prisons mm -hmm. and what they would do is because of the massive size and the aggression to back it they would use these dogs to intimidate the prisoners into submission yeah you see what i'm saying one of the <laughs> famous things they said is that when they introduced this breed they use less bullets yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true so what are they most commonly known for or used for? Livestock. Livestock. Yeah. The original, the original purpose. And that is where they come in to, 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 to fight the wolves and the, the, yeah. the bears, right. protecting the, the herd. They're not a particular herding breed like the German Shepherd or the Rottweiler, mm -hmm. but they're more of a flock guardian yeah. where they will actually stand and watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they don't round up the sheep or anything. Oh. They just stand and watch and take a look out for the predators. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That money. So you would be the person who would have imported these dogs. That's correct. What would have led you to, 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 to bring in, you know, such a large dog? It, you know, it's funny that you ask because it, when you look at the dog, it just looks so exotic. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the size is one thing mm -hmm. and then also the coloration and then, you know, it just looks yeah, uh, it, it doesn't even look like a dog. It looks like a bear. Yeah, and and I guess that's why they call it the Russian bear dog also as a nickname. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It you know the size, the aggression, everything. I just I just love the breed. You know? yeah. yeah, I remember the first time I saw the breed was on YouTube back in 2008, yeah. and I said, "Whoa, that dog is massive." I mean, I would love to have a dog like that. Matter of fact, what if I could bring that dog down to Jamaica? And yeah. it, it took you some years. Yeah, because at the time. Uh, I was still in school, yeah. college and all that and you know, I didn't really I wasn't. So it was an aspiration then and yes. it's a reality you now. Yes. I mean congratulations right. on that. Yes. You know, thank follow you. your dreams. Yeah, follow your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So all aspiring breeders, you know, follow your dreams. Yes. Alright, so Wooly. Yes. Let's let's look at the temperament of these dogs. What are their temperament like? You know, there you you have uh You'd say an average temperament, mm -hmm. and then in that average, they still have individuals. Yeah. Because um, when they're listening about the Caucasian, they don't say they're aggressive. Mm -hmm. They come under the title of ferocious. Yes. You know, because they have very, very sharp aggression. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when it comes on to the family, though, they're sweet. They're sweethearts. Yeah. But anything outside of what they take as their flock, 
-hmm. because even right now with this puppy, it's learning what its flock is. Mm -hmm. And um, like this morning, I saw the behavior already that it identified certain members of the household as its flock. Yeah. And then, you know, like the first time now when somebody comes in, it moves away from them and stay by us. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's already been imprinted on it. So, yeah. you know, that is something that's intrinsic within the breed. And it speaks to the intelligence of the breed. They are very, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. They study your trend and they always try to be one step ahead of you. Yeah. Especially if, say, for instance, um, you're going to be doing a routine and it's time for them to say, put away for a little bit. They will know the time when you're going to put them away and they will <laughs> try to evade you yeah, not yeah. to go in and stuff. Yeah. So they are very, very smart. They also um, learn to pull the locks. So you have to put the clips on it to prevent <laughs> them from coming. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Man, they, they do. <laughs> yeah. They're a lot smart if you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. All right. How do they get along with other dogs? Once they are, all right. So outside of the outside the breed. of the breed. Yeah. All right. Because they would they would definitely stand out. All right. So when the money um, brought them here and stuff, you know, the very next day and stuff, I started introducing them through. Um, a barrier yeah and then I tried as with the females I tried the males first okay to make sure there's no female and female aggression mm -hmm. and then what I did when I introduce a male and I see that they're neutral to it yeah then I introduce pups because when it comes down to the smaller animals and stuff they are less likely to be aggressive mm -hmm. so I introduced them with those so I, I sent out a whole pack of the pups and they were just with them and I just did add it more and more. And then they learned. They know every single dog that belongs here. Puppy and adult. And if there's a pup that's not supposed to be here, know that they have established what's their pup, uh -huh. they will kill it. Wow. So whether small or big. So um, in introducing this into your family, you have to make sure you socialize them with everything yeah. that they're going to be around. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any L concerns with this breed, Amani? Well, you know, as with any dog, there are a few, you yeah. know, like, you know, it's a giant dog. So, of course, as they age, you know, some of them will get like osteoporosis, bone problems yeah. with the joints, all of that, uh, hip dysplasia. Yeah. Also, conjunctivitis, mm -hmm. you know, as well. They but have, that comes with age. Yeah. 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 And they, they have um, cataract is, is one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. But from a dog that is in the colder region, because you know how cataract, cataract behaves. Yeah. It's the body developing that flesh to protect the eye uh -huh. for, from too much light. Okay. So them being in a colder region, when they come in the warmer climates and stuff, you have to watch out for that. Oh. You know? They also have rarely, but it is also in the breed, that's what they call PRA. Progressive uh -huh. retinal atrophy. Yeah. And but it's not as prominent as it is with the cataract stuff. So. Okay, what about bloat? Uh, Large dogs tend to all uh, dogs with deep chest, yeah. You gotta ensure that when you're feeding yes. them, you're feeding them a proper diet. Yeah. And when they eat, let them go rest. Okay. Because they can be rambunctious and they don't know that they will hurt themselves. It's your responsibility as an owner mm -hmm. to ensure that you let them cultivate the habit of eating, resting. Okay. So one hour before they eat let them pipe down then you feed another hour after before mm -hmm. they go back to regular activity okay you know and it's not just with this breed all the large chest, breed, the yeah. doberman mm -hmm. um the great danes all those with the deep chest cavity yeah are prone to to bloat okay what is the life expectancy oh this is a healthy breed though 10 to yeah. 12 years yeah. 10 to 12 years 10 to 12 years well for but the large dog that, that's a large. very long time General, yes. generally healthy yeah mm -hmm. generally a long time yeah all right, Woody, in terms of nutrition, what is the most appropriate diet? Right, that's a good one. So I'm gonna go back with this. There's a broad scope mm -hmm. and then you have to deal with individuals okay. because how she eats is different from the other female. Oh. You know. Um, in terms of? In, in terms of, let's say, well, then we're doing raw and we're doing beef and, and you put in your vegetables and so forth. Mm -hmm. She might not like it but the other one likes it. Okay. You still have to, even with their choices, you have to try to find, to navigate through what yeah. they want to eat to give them the best start with it. You know, a high quality um, dog food, yeah. you know. Such and as the Purina Pro Plan. Mm -hmm. Right the, now, I can tell you that this is one of the best on the island, yeah. easily. Definitely. Whenever I'm starting out my puppies, 
I was introduced to this by a friend of mine too, you know. Yeah. And he gave me that and um, um, there's another another one that I had tried before. But um, this is this is definitely my go to yeah. in starting yeah. off. And I've yeah. seen excellent results. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That that's good to know. That's good to know. High quality dogs deserve high quality food. Exactly. Of course. You know, <laughs> and it doesn't make sense you go down to something medium or, or even less mm -hmm. than you know no, what, what you what, spend your money on a dog yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. take care of it uh, yeah. but how important that is though because i think a lot of breeders miss that well let me tell you how or, or even just dog owners yeah how i see it is either you spend now or you spend more later yeah and true. also risk right. the life of the dog true yeah. so yeah. It, it's your decision but for somebody who's gonna have proper ethics when it comes down to these dogs, mm -hmm. nutrition is going to be um, the epicenter of dealing with this breed. Yeah. You know, to get the full, the full stature of the dog. All right, so you, you have two things. Well, you have epigenetics and you have genetics, right? Mm -hmm. Epigenetics have to do with like the, the atmosphere, the nutrition and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because some things in the genetics will lie dormant without the new proper nutrition. Yeah. And so once you're paying attention to both sides of those, you will see things expressed better in the pups that are cared for than yeah. even the adults who in the beginning gave the genetics but are not properly nutrified. Yeah. So it, it's it's key. Wow. That money. You know, all dogs need physical activity. True. Oh, how much do they need? Well, okay, put it like this. They don't require a whole lot. Yes, they do require room to mm -hmm. roam because, you know, it's a, a, a flock guardian dog, right. so they mm -hmm. need to roam and naturally that's what they do. Yeah. But in comparison to, let's say, a Dutch Shepherd or a Malinois, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, <laughs> energy level is not, energy. No. Not a high energy dog like that. Yeah. They'll do their job now, yeah. but they're not gonna be all over the place like, yeah. like okay. one of those breeds. I would say they're like the lions, you know? Yeah. They have all that energy, but they conserve it until it's necessary. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, I mean, grooming. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it seems like a lot of work. Well, look, look at my pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see it's a lot of work. But, but how, how do you go about and how often do they need to be groomed? I would say twice a week. Yeah, twice a week? That. Twice a week, every week. What, what is that but, they do? Um, what you do, you make sure you get out the mats and stuff because you're not going to show them all the time. Yeah. Because, but if they get wet and stuff, these dogs, they will play in the mud. That's, That's when true. you have the challenge. Yeah. And then you the know. dreadlocks yes. will start yeah. forming. Yes. And so the reason why you don't want to show them too much, you'll lose the water. Um, the waterproof from yeah. the boat. So you want to make sure they have less bath as possible so you keep them maintained. So, so they you, don't you get, brush? Yes. Brush, brush, brush. How yes. often? How, how often do we brush again? Like, um, I would say about three times a week. Yeah? Yeah. Because the least little thing they do, they can just lay on the side for a little bit and this side gets matted. Yes. Oh. You know, especially when so it's wet. You have to wet. really pay attention to the dog. Especially when it's wet. Yeah. yeah. But so the yeah. most important part is when they're blowing the coat. And they blow the coat twice. Yeah. They blow the coat twice a year. And that's a time now when you really want to be heavy on the, on the grooming. And, uh, yeah, because that's the, mm -hmm, the heavy mm -hmm. shedding period. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, these dogs are large breed dogs. Right? And they have the attitude to match it. Correction. So, they're giant. actually extra large giant breed. <laughs> Same thing, <laughs> you know. So, with being such, because these are one of the largest dogs on the planet. Yes, they yes. are. And, 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 and as I said before, they have the attitude to match that. Yes. In terms of socialization. Mm -hmm. That's integral. How important that is. It's very, <laughs> very. It's extremely, 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 extremely important. important. Because Explain. these dogs, as I said, they bond quickly, they identify their flock, and anything else is perceived mm -hmm. as a threat. So you could have your, let's say for instance, you have them with kids. Yeah, that's what I was going And they're around mm -hmm. your kids and stuff, your neighbor is bringing over his kid, but it's not as often mm -hmm. as, as um, we, we would like. Yeah. And that dog see the rough hose in between the kids, mm -hmm. that dog will get into action thinking that their flock, which is your children, are, in are under, yes. So you have to monitor that. And if you want to that, you show the, the dog all the pictures that it's going to be seeing 
um, whether on a daily basis or a monthly basis to get the best out of the dog. All right, so with that said, mm -hmm. Oli, how do you integrate these dogs into a family setting? Start early. Start early. Early um, as this the, puppy? Because as you early, mentioned this as, puppy as wants to protect. Already. Yeah. Already. Because they pick up things very fast. Yeah. So, as just like training, mm -hmm. you have to start very early because it's a very stubborn breed. Yeah. Very strong will. Mm -hmm. And they, it's not a breed for first time owners. You have Definitely to be not. a very dominant person. Yeah. Because they mm -hmm. are very stubborn. So, you, you have to have strong leadership characteristics. Exactly. Yes. So, I wouldn't want to say, you know, being an alpha, but you have to be a dominant person. Yes. yes. So, so with that said, who should be owning one of these dogs? I would say a family that everyone is on board. Yeah. That's it. Somebody that know they're going to be responsible. True. And it's not one person out of the family that's holding it down. Everybody understands the protocols needed yeah. to facilitate dealing with this breed. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. I hope you all hear that because. I know you all will flock my inbox asking for contact for Oli and the puppies. Now we're going to show you the other puppies here as well. But just before we do that, stay tuned for our dog act. Dog act, making your life with your dogs easier. Today's dog act is brought to you by Purina Pro Plan. As a giant breed, the Caucasian Shepherds are prone to bloat. To avoid this, do not exercise them 60 minutes before or after meal time. Avoid feeding large portions instead. Try to feed them twice or three times a day in smaller portions. That's our Purina Dog Act. So welcome back. Willie is going to... Well, Wooly and Damani is going to introduce the dogs to us. Let's go. Okay, so this is Chara. She's a Russian import, purebred Caucasian Shepherd. I renamed her Loka because I realized she's a bit on the crazy side. Um, <laughs> she's actually very, very rambunctious, very playful, nice dog, very protective also. Very, very protective, very loving, very loyal. Um, she also, she, as you can see, she's a shedder as well. They all are. Uh, very nice dog. Very nice, very aggressive. Uh, nice coloration. Nice figure, everything. Perfect dog. Perfect pedigree. Also, she's very, very, very attentive. And very, like I said, she's very aggressive. Okay. <laughs> so. As far as the appearance of the dog, the ears are cropped. Normally they're cropped, and as you can see with Loka, her ears are cropped. Uh, the reason they're cropped um, is because if they're on the um, open field, open plain, they, if they should engage in a fight with a wolf, they won't get injured so easily because the ears would be dangling. So that's why the ears are particularly cropped. Um, okay, mama, be quiet. Yes, so, her ears are cropped also, the, uh, like I'd mentioned before, you have two types. The uh, mountain type, which is actually bigger than Loka here. And then you have the step type, which she's more the step type. The bone structure is big, but not as big. And also the fur, the coat is not as long. So she would be more classified as the step type mountain Caucasian dog. All right, here we go. So this is Luna. She also heals from Russia with the same, pretty much the same information, except that um, different, different parents. This is the reason though. All right, Luna, wait. This is the reason though why even Damani didn't bring her, because she bonded to me when she came. And then, wait, sit. Good girl. So when she bonded with me, I get a lot more out of her, even with the obedience, as you see. But she's totally aggressive to any outsider. She's not as, you know, social as the other one. She loves who she loves and she hates who she doesn't know. <laughs> That's pretty much her temperament. She's the mother of the puppies 
and so we'd be expecting that the pups are gonna come with it. She was a little bit more stubborn than the other one also um, and I've worked through all those hurdles to get her to this point. Um, what you see now is actually I would say 25 percent of um, what she would have been in terms of you couldn't be here even doing the videoing uh, when she just started. So this is the best of her that you're seeing. She's a little bit bigger and the same standard with the ear scraping is there. You know, um, there's a lot of activists now going against the cropping of ears. For me in particular, I would still crop my dog's ear because um, on the last show we did, there was a mastiff that was shown on that um, program. It's okay, it's okay. There was a mastiff shown on that program and he was called Uchi, meaning the last because his mother was taken out because three pit bulls um, attacked her and one of them grabbed the ear and she couldn't defend herself any anymore and that was it for her so for me personally i would still keep it it's not like they really have a competition um, to go against these dogs these were bred to go against wolves and stuff so i wouldn't be liking for these to be um, fighting other animals in particular that is one of the things to in, in those that are looking to own these breeds I am definitely an advocate for keeping these dogs out of the hands of those who are careless and would love to engage for sport in showing that their dog is more powerful. So um, for those who have that intention, this is not the place to be looking for to get a dog. Apart from that, she's a sweetheart, you know, my favorite dog. Um, and you can see it with her. I think that pretty much sums it up with her, right Luna? All right, baby. All right, so we're here now with Grizzly. Think a better name for him should have been Mufasa, as you're looking at him. At one time, we had given him the lion cut. You can see his tail still has the lion thing, but his fur has grown back now. And this is the one now that hails from Romania, as we were saying. Um, Damani, would you like to just share a little bit about him? So Grizzly, he is the first dog I purchased. I acquired him from Romania, he's a Romanian import. Um, basically I had him since he was three months old, a baby, and now he's this big giant bear. Uh, as you can see, his ears, they're not cropped. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. They're not cropped, they're natural. Mm -hmm. So um, this is how an, a natural ears look like a Caucasian Shepherd. They're floppy, okay? He, he's a big boy <laughs> and he's very aggressive, yeah. very protective. The last time we weighed him, he, he was, he was um, a little bit underweight. You hear? All right, speak up, big boy. Yeah, but when he was underweight, he was still 170 pounds. Uh, he's coming back now on, on form, but he's still a little bit hesitant with eating because there's a female there in, in heat. And so he is semi-fasting. So he's still not even his full weight as, as yet. Okay, so Grizzly, he's actually four years old. He's quite, you know, I can say he'll be five in November. Uh, time flies. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, oh, oh, I forgot to mention, the thing with this breed is, they basically stopped going at three years old. Mm -hmm. So it's not long since he actually stopped, you know, his full growth. So they're, because of it, uh, it's a giant breed, they basically, they're slow growers. Mm -hmm. So by the time they get to three years of age, they max out on their growth. All right, all right, boy. Good boy. Good dog. Good dog. Come, come. Good dog. Don't try to raise my or anything. No, just come. Act like you're talking to him as good a friend. Boy. Good boy. Good boy. Grizzly. Give me a little smile, man. Uh, a little closer. Grizzly. Come closer. I'm not sure if I got any close in it. So this one, you notice how he's very sneaky. Yeah. He acts as he acts as though he's not gonna do anything, but he wants you in range. If you turn your back, then you'll know the real deal. Or if you just if you just act like you say run him, try run him away. 
So he is not he's not going on with anything right now. Hold on. Let me share my mom. Do that. <laughs> but if you get closer now. Yeah. She's not even looking so at you. If 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 I if I if I run him away. Mm -hmm. If you try to, yeah. because you can. Okay. Hey, Gracie, hold on, you're holding. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You're Gracie, good. Gracie, go on. Hey. Yeah. Nobody's good, man. Gracie. You see how he's he, he's acting? Very smart. Very smart. Come a little closer. I'm gonna show about the closer now. Alright, I've got him. Come. You see? See? Hey. Good boy. Come. This dog. <laughs> Good boy, Chris. Chris. He's always been like that. Yeah. As is. And he'll but fool you. Yeah. He'll fool Alright. You. you see? He wants to pounce. That's all. Really mm -mm. He's just waiting for the right moment when you're off guard. Yeah. Yeah, man. Out of all of them, he's the trickiest one. Whoa. I'm so you see, you look at him, man. Um, that's how he, he actually tore off a short off a, a, a tourist, you know, that came here. Whoa. You know, like he was just like this, yeah. and she was passing casually, and he just straight through the jeans. my jeans. <laughs> Good boy, Chris. All right, let's go. Here's sit. It. Sit. Good boy. You've never seen something like this, then. We're back on the road. Here we are with the puppies now. This is actually a six week old puppy. Though it looks like more like eight, nine weeks old. This is really just six weeks old. This one um, is still bigger, um, still six, but this one is the, this one is a giant in the, in the little. So this one, I think we're actually keeping this one. That's what we're doing, right? Yes. Yeah. Screamer now. We call him Screamer because he loves attention. He's the only one in the litter that always wants you um, by. You know, if you, <laughs> when you put him on the floor, then he starts reaching for your tongue to put him back in the hand. So I'm not sure how he think he's gonna be a coach potato weighing, you know, close to 200 pounds and so forth. But that's the reason why. In terms of nutrition though, um, we try to give him high quality green. Um, also with um, a little bit of raw or semi-raw feeding. And um, you can see the bones and stuff, the structure, there's no, no rib. We keep them healthy, but at the same time, we have to watch their weight because um, even the adults are prone to obesity and these are, um, we want to grow them slow. We don't want any joint problems going forward um, as they grow, which can turn up easily. Sometimes even being the giant breeds, they will try to jump off of stuff. You got to watch that because you're not gonna see the damage until later and stuff. So um, I think in their head, they are a little bit bigger than, than what they really are. So you got to watch that also. Um, you need to start introducing these puppies to what they're gonna be around. You know, they start to learn their pack from early. And so even with placing them um, at different homes, uh, we need to actually go through a little bit of a session, a little talk with those who are gonna have them and what this dog is gonna be familiarized with so that they know how to work with this dog. Um, this is actually a breed now that needs a lot of education more than all the other breeds which we have dealt with. Because um, in the blink of an eye, you're going to have a giant that's going to be prone to stubbornness, as we have said before. Um, so even in place in this, I think we're going to have some stipulations where they have to come back to do training uh, with us. Um, we, we do not believe in letting somebody experiment with this breed, lest we get them on a bad rap sheet before they get a proper introduction and stuff. You know, but um, yeah, all those who have sheep, goats, cows, and um, family that you want to be protected as a flock, this is one of them that needs less work because they naturally do what they're supposed to do. They need more guidance than training. You know, the, um, the part that you need to focus on is just the stubbornness. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, so now I'm going to, boy, <laughs> mm. now I'm going to test. One of the most powerful dogs. 
mm -hmm. on the planet. Right? So what so, we're doing, you know, Robert always comes and he always check all the breeds. He doesn't skip a breed. And so what we're doing is ensuring that he can do many more shows after this. So <laughs> I'm equipping him with some gauntlets. I'm going to do a double gauntlet and then sleeve. We're not putting him in the suit because if he doesn't release, then um, he's gonna have to stay over. So we, we'll use a sleeve. Yeah, we don't want, I mean, we don't need to remind him that these dogs kill bears and wolves. And they like a sheep like me. <laughs> so this is just a gauntlet to prevent any, any damage when we use the sleeve. Cha <sighs> cha. Yeah. Oh, double up. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Two gauntlets, one sleeve. The reason why we're using the sleeve, as soon as the dog um, grabs onto this, we want you to release it. We don't want the dog flashing your, your oh. hand out of socket. So, yeah. quick release. Um, if it pays. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, flash out of socket? Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, that's, that's why I'm telling you, you now. You work with me, we work yeah. as a team, we get this thing done. All right. Um, she's not a sleeve dog, she's gonna want to go for you. So I suggest when she grabs a sleeve to tear it off, leave it with her, run to that area. All right. All right. She, she doesn't want the sleeve. So, <laughs> look, look. She don't want that. She don't want the sleeve. She don't, no. Come back. She don't want that. I saw them down, you see? Yeah. Bre 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 Black iron. Notice what she do? She go past the sleeve. And it's the same thing with the other guy when we're training. Yeah. They never want If they even grab the sleeve, they throw it off and go for the guy. That's the thinking dog. Um, so my ball is not like my coward. So the best Just thing what we do, we're gonna show them through the gate where they can be free and do what they want to do. Wow. Alright? We couldn't actually have the, the show closed off without first, you know, giving a shout out and a thanks to uh, one of our sponsors, Purina Pro Plan, for donating this bag of food. Um, as we had mentioned before, these puppies grow extremely fast, rapidly and stuff, and they need proper nutrition. And this is our go-to from beginning, and I just want to say thanks. As we close yet another episode, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Purina Pet Food. Remember, follow us on all social media platforms at PurebredDogsJA. Please remember to like, comment, share our content on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. See you next week.